Welcome forward, welcome Thank forward you. to episode 12. Episode 12 of this very, very special vlog featuring none other than my brethren, Patrick Anthony Tenu, trumpeter, producer, extraordinaire. Still here. Still, Still here, here bruv. Right? And um, previously we mentioned um, about your the work. The UB4 and Bit Bitchy McLean's and, yeah, all that, yeah. and all of that stuff. So we'll just we'll just. And Courtney it. Pine and my introduction into jazz. Ah. Which is very important because it leads on to, to your production company, which is now known as Homefront, which let's say it's safe to say that it features it features jazz and reggae and more contemporary material from from the from your headspace basically more or less. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, all the influences that I've had and, and that I like mm -hmm. in music. Um, before before Homefront was set up, I I did have um, other labels. I was running a label with some friends uh, in Birmingham, um, Rough Tone Recordings, because like I was right up into a uh, drum and bass, mm. right? And you know, say so, um, drum and bass, the jungle thing, yeah, wouldn't come about unless man like I is in it, like the reggae man, them, mm. right? See, so kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, we, 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 all uh, rebel MC and all, all them men is reggae. Yeah, yeah. You understand? But we love the we 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 love the beats. We love we we love the beats that's coming from America, the loops and stuff, mm -hmm. and that's how it works. And so mm -hmm. I had a label called um, uh, Rough Tone Recordings, mm -hmm. uh, which we we had uh, we had a few releases on that. Uh, Earl Faulkner was was a close partner for me in 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 this in this. We we um um. Myself and Earl, we put on the first ever jungleist drum and bass tour wow. in Europe. Uh, we just had a friend that was uh, he was into it, and uh, we just told him we fixed his car. We had one of them little nice Renault sporty things, mm -hmm. but he needed a bit of attention. So we, we 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 spent some money, fixed up his car, put him inside it, gave him some gas money to him. Said, "Listen, let's run around Europe and see how many gigs you can get." Same. And he came back with about eight. Right, and uh, eight different venues and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, when we came back now, we said, All right, we put the tour together. So, at the time, my brother, um, we had DJs, but my brother was like an MC mm -hmm. at the time. And he, uh, my brother, my youngest brother, mm -hmm. which no one knows, right? He's all musically as well, but he's more the MC. He used to chat with um, Frontline International. What's, and what's, what's, so what's, so what's the younger Philip brother? T. Philip T. Philip T. Oh, okay, okay. Phil T, Phil T. Phil T, <laughs> with the nasty lyrics. <laughs> yeah, man, man, yeah, yeah, you see Philip on Frontline, man. I, 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 I work with Welter and Irie and them one day. You know see, I mean? like, see. see. And Saxon and all them, yeah, man, yeah. used to run around. But my, my, my little brother's a Tugs. Yeah. At them day, they was a Tugs out of the road. You right. understand what I'm saying? Right. But he, him, him and the next um, white bridge, you know, of ours, right, is, is a Millwall fan, right? a proper hardcore Millwall fan, right? Mm. They come together and made up this radio station called the Boss FM. And Boss FM was the first radio station in London playing jungle music, bro. See. Right? And I, I was, we, we had fun. We had fun. I, I had a man that used to set up because then they had the microlink system. Yeah. And you didn't have to find, but you had to protect yourself. So, like, they used to find some really high buildings, get the key, or get it to know how to key, or kick the door in, put their setup inside there, and leave a man up there. Mm. Up, up there all night. He's got to be up there all night, all weekend, because the boss of them's got to be running. Mm. So, I'm like, my brother, they, they were in the radio thing. So, I had him. Come down, he was the MC, and we had some other DJs um, uh, on, on, on the tour. Mm -hmm. We had a bus, and uh, I, I organized um, a truck mm -hmm. with sound and lights. So we had the sound and lights and a, and, and a bus with the DJs in there. They used to have their decks inside so they could practice on the road, and right. we went off tour. Yeah, man, me and I'm pretty proud of that, you know what I mean? Being the first to ever put on a junglist tour. Because I'm into the junglist music, you know. Mm -hmm. From that, we had a um, uh, had a hit, I had a really big hit, which was um, which was amplified by a DJ called DJ Ron, who's mm -hmm. in the who's in the who's a junglist DJ, okay. and uh, the track was called a Crack Man, 
right? It was an anti-drug song, you know, man, don't do crack. Crack man on the line, he's freaking out. So don't do that. Mm. You know what I mean? And this was put together by my, by my brother and uh, this other DJ called P Diddy, who should have uh, running around up in Birmingham at the time. It was the yeah. idea of Earl Faulkner. I must say, he stressed that. Yeah, it's, 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 so he was pretty integral in quite a few of your projects then. Yeah, man, Earl, man. When we was in UB40, brother, me and him are ruined. See, see. Riding bikes together and this and that. And we, we were rolling, bro. Mm. We were rolling together. And, and and then Jerry Parchment was an engineer because mm. like, he loved me and right, that son. So he used to engineer all our stuff. And mm. that's how his involvement. But like me and Earl was like, we started, we started up the labels. And then... We, 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 we had some other friends that were more into house music. Right. But, um, but they, they, they're on the other side of town. They're Villa Heads, mm -hmm. right? And Villa Heads are all the smooth white boys and all that, right? Scene. And then you had the Zulu Heads, all the rough, rough ass them from Birmingham, right? right. <laughs> they're, they're city fans. Birmingham city fans are Zulus, yeah. right? And all the Villa Heads, they're all like, all Villa Heads, innit? <laughs> I still love them. <laughs> uh, but there was one shop. That the both of them will converge. Will converge, yeah, right? Man. See the Lee Fisher and, and Mark Baxter, they man, they at the shop, and they're all into the house thing. So we got together, you know, got together with them now and said, all right, then we make a house label. So we made two labels. We had one called Our Kids, mm -hmm. and we had one another track, called, uh, another label called Boston Records. Mm -hmm. We were running this. Jock Lee was our man. We got a building. I built a studio in Birmingham. Everything like mm. we even dug under the under the government pavement to make the room bigger. <laughs> Done a few things, prop it up. But you know, we uh, we, we, we 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 had the label. We had our own offices. Mm. We had a a different man running that label, that side of it, mm. and uh, and uh, Boston Records had a hit. Had a really big hit, right? Um, but we had we were selling like on average, like we'd do like ten thousand units. So these, so, so these are basically underground hits we're talking here. Yeah, yeah it's right. all underground hits. Right? We'll, we'll do like ten thousand, fifteen thousand, the most on, on, on any given category. Right? The lowest we'll get is like if something come out, it would sell a couple of thousand. Right. That's it. You know what I mean? It's not a big tune or anything like mm -hmm. that. But we had a, I had a nice little run with that label, mm -hmm. right? Boston Records until we had a. A, our big hit, which was called All Funked Up, and that blew up. My trumpet on it, right in the beginning. It's it, it's uh, more of an instrumental yeah. with a couple of samples. It was a uh, the group was Mother, which was one of the label managers. Okay, one of the label, Lee Fisher. He had a little group, so like obviously it's in house, so we do yeah, our yeah. thing. And um, that blew up, bro. That blew up, blew up so much. It was uh, for for three months, two three months. It was number one single in, in a dance in the dance in the dance in, oh, okay. in, in the club in the club charts right in music week club chart yeah, yeah. three months bro wouldn't Shit. stop it wouldn't stop everyone was playing it I be for it was playing everywhere right. me playing trumpet but you can still get it on like that mm -hmm. right and um, uh, we done that it blew up so big that I even got into a, a, a learning curve again you know. You should do this to get into the pre charts and, and put you, you know, what I mean, do them certain things, and then bang, all of a sudden, this company called 3MV came up yeah. from Sony. What do you want? Ah, oh, we want your tune. <laughs> we, want to, we want to license it. Wow, yeah, man, big tune. Man, I tell you what, let's make a video earn. So, right, you before he was making a video at the time, right? And then we kidnapped the, we kidnapped the, the, the crew, cameraman. The crew, yeah. yeah, right. He tell him we got, we came down in, in Earl's basement, and his daughter Adele, she was dancing, right? So we had a film, film like dancing Adele in, in, in this low basement, man. Right? And then it was the first time like a man was like using graphic, computerized graphics sure. to, to 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 make a video, mm -hmm. right? Man, it got all the way. It got all the way. The chart show was there at the time. Was mm. it put in? Because like, when, uh, when when it got um, re-released again, it went straight into uh, number thirty-two in the national charts. Same. I was rolling, man. I'm going, blood, blood, nothing's like one from it. Mm. And uh, yeah, it kind of it kind of blew up, and then it kind of got shot in the leg because like BBC, right, with their with their policy, right. Sometimes they sometimes they're bloody assholes. They are. Right, 
like big arseholes, like see, right, they don't they feel no freedom for go on. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, right? Uh, they they said that our our, our our video was provocative, was showing sexual moves. It wasn't. There was only one girl dancing, and <laughs> we just made the graphics. People dancing. <laughs> you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So. That, that, that kind of, it slowed us up a bit because like when BBC said that they weren't playing it, it weren't getting on the national chart. Mm. But MTV was was running the video, Chart Show was running the video, Channel 4 was running the video. Mm. It was getting, as I said, number one in the club chart in, 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 in me for, for, for months. Sure. So that was another experience I had with, with them, with, 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 uh, with having labels. Right. But then I moved out of Birmingham and, uh, you know, Birmingham kind of, uh, I got tired of, well, Birmingham got tired of me as well. And because and of the UB40 thing, I didn't want to be around them no more. Mm. Remember, they live up there, yeah, it's yeah. all there, mate. So I quickly got out of there. Mm -hmm. I got, quickly got out of there and um, came down here. And um, then uh, ended up, went to Jamaica, went to Germany. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing some products from there because this is where I started to learn more about my engineering skills and okay. and, and production mm -hmm. and started to do the jazz. And my first jazz was uh, I, I recorded in in in, in Germany. It's it's um it's re released, so I'm gonna be releasing the whole of that album there. It's a completely jazz and contemporary album. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that. That was in Germany. Then um I went to Jamaica and I've done I was learning a bit more there, but I had to get away from everything. Music business was not fair with me. Mm. My family broke down. You know what I mean? The woman up and left, took the kids. I go, no, you don't have to go. You can stay there. I'll go. No, no, don't have nothing to do with that. Mm. Okay, time's long enough, road. Let's see what's going to go on. You know what I mean? Right? Mm. I wasn't going to force you issue. Oh, you're going to do this. You know what I mean? Because that would do that. Honestly, that would do my head in. Mm. Mm. You know, and, to, and, 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 and the creative person I am, right? If if I if I start concentrating on things like that, I would lose yeah, all of it. Yeah. I would lose all of this, mm. and then it'd be it'd be even sadder, right? So I, anyway, I went to Jamaica, spent ten years. I was but I was in and always in and out, out yeah. yeah, and doing productions in Germany, acting, theatre, done 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 a lot. That's yeah. another story. But then I came back to England in two thousand and eleven, mm -hmm. and on two thousand and eleven. I brought the home front company because I started it in Jamaica. Mm. So I brought the home front company and I said, all right, then I'm going to be here. So from 2011, I started knocking out rhythms, knocking out productions. And I've, uh, today I've got four albums to date. That's, that's been released, a number of singles and stuff like that. I built, I built one studio with some friends. That's pulled down. Mm. Now I'm going to go again and build them because like, I need that vibe so I can bring the youth that is my idea. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and the thing I like about your productions as well, I mean, from, from a reggae perspective, is that obviously they're original and they're contemporary and they're fresh. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and they, 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 do have, they do have your imprint on it. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, in, just in terms of the sounds, just the, just the sounds that makes up the rhythms. It's not just your basic tick, tick, cut, tick, 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 cut kind of vibe. It's like you... You, you you get all sonic with your rhythms and that's what that's I, right, that's, yeah. and that's 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 what that's what I love about them. So with that, our worlds collided. Um, yeah and yeah yeah it's like it's like um, I've always had uh, I I thought I wasn't doing good. Right. Tell you the truth, you know until like. Uh, I, I would work with you and they'd say yeah Patrick can make some good tunes, you know. But like to be recognised. By established artists like such as yourself, mm. and to come and say, "Why, why, Patrick, you're really doing good. I like what you're doing there. You, you know what I mean? That, that, that give me a boost, yes, I, I, and uh, give me energy. Cause like, um, I've, off, I've offered other artists, and it's like, I feel like I'm, I, I, oh, I'm not good enough, or my production is not good enough, or you understand know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, and, and you come uh, I'm from England. I'm talking, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you 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 working with me, or we're working together mm. on songs. It's it's giving me more of that encouragement. To say, yeah, well, Pat, what you're doing is right. You know, mm. some give tongues that we're there, yes, Mr. Sir. Mr. Brown. You know, that that that, that and till we can even write even today, cause like, why why we did mother murder the one. <laughs> 
Hey. I've, 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 I've already written the song and sang and sang the, sang the proper vocals, so he's already got the song already. He's got the song for the Ben Up Rhythm and also the White Boy Rhythm. Ah, oh, the Ben Up Rhythm. That is even so simple. Look, you see how that was in it? <laughs> Piano all over the tracks and everything, you know? But it's the vibe. Yeah. It's the vibe, and as you said, the sonics, yeah, because like, I'm, uh, um, uh, 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 according to people, I'm not normal. Hear this, man. I'm in school, right? Mm. See, you know, I'm primary school. I'm, I'm like seven, eight years old, you know, mm. right? And I'll be writing music in my head mm. from them early ages there, even when I was playing. But I'll be, I wanted to write music, you know, and, uh, and I'm hearing sound of birds. And what, what, one thing that used to freak me, and I should like it, right, was the, the passing of cars along the school, you know? And you'll hear a car go, and because I lived near Crystal Palace, mm. that was another thing that was there, because like, at that time there, my early age, right, seeing, this should be the racing car track you should run around. So you see every Saturday, and I'll go, and, be, and some people look at me go, I'm bloody crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's tones and yeah. sounds, and, and then I hear Dennis Bovell one day, he's like, he's in Studio 80, man, he's got the door opening and going, and I'm like, we had to do this. He said, boy, you know, you are going on <laughs> I'm Word. going, you're nuts, bro. You are Word, really Word, sound and power. And that's where we're going to basically um, call time on this episode. So we're going to forward in episode... Yeah, it's made much, much more. Much 13. More. We're going to go forward to episode... Final episode. Final episode. M. Right. 13. Number... 13th letter of our English alphabet. M. Music. Soon forward. <laughs>